Hi there, my name's Alex and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a little pride bee. So I've taken my chunky bee pattern and shrunk it right down to a really cute size bee. And you can change this colour scheme on this like I have for my Rainbow Pride bee. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Both of these bees are made using exactly the same pattern, just different yarn. And this is Priscilla. She's made using the chunky size pattern. And I may have a tutorial coming up for that soon if anyone's interested. So this pattern is the smallest in the four different B tutorials that I have available at the moment. Uh, the pride size, which is the smallest, 28 stitches around. Then we go to the mid, which is 36 stitches around. The big, which is 48 stitches. And then the giant chunky size, which is 60 stitches around. Now I've put together a color scheme guide for you. There are 19 rounds in this smaller size B and this little guide will show you if you wanted to do a pride B or change up your design, this will give you a guide as to which rounds you should put your colors in so that you get your pattern correct and the size of the B correct. So I hope that you find this helpful. Okay, so the things you're going to need for this project, obviously you're going to need yarn in the colours that you want your finished bee to be. Uh, a crochet hook, scissors, a darning needle, some poly fibre fill, two safety eyes or felt and glue, and um, some embroidery cotton or yarn for the mouth, and some felt and fabric glue for the cheeks if you wanted to use it that way. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using milk cotton yarn, which is around about a DK to a worsted weight yarn and a 3.5 millimeter hook. And I'm using the colors for the trans flag. Okay, so we first start by creating a magic ring. Now, if anyone out there struggles with creating a magic ring, and trust me, I know how hard it is when I first started uh, using this method. Um, I do have two tutorials on my channel. One has got a, a complete hack for anyone who's really struggling with how that works. And for round one, we'll be creating six single crochet stitches into that magic ring. Now don't tighten that magic ring completely until we have actually joined and I'll show you how to do that. So we'll be using a method that I call transitioning um, and what we're actually doing is we're going to rather than working in a spiral like we would normally do with amigurumi uh, with the B project we're going to work that into rounds individual rounds so what we want to do is join to that very back loop of the very first single crochet stitch we created just by slip stitching that yarn through and we've completed a complete circle there then the very front loop, we're going to be able to put our hook under the front loop and the back loop and start our next round by creating a single crochet. And this pattern calls for an increase. So that's going to be two single crochet stitches into that first stitch space of round two. Time to tighten up your magic ring now that we've joined back to the beginning of our round. I will actually show you again in the next round how I have transitioned. Also, don't forget that YouTube has the facility there that you can slow down anything that I'm doing or speed up anything that I'm doing on your video. Now, we're going to be doing two stitches into each of those stitch spaces, which will give you 12 stitches at the end of round two. Now, on to round three, and I'm going to show you that transition again. Looking at the two top loops of the first single crochet stitch you created in that round, we're going to insert the hook under the back loop only, pick up some yarn, pull it through, pull it through the, the loop on your hook, and now we can create our first single crochet for round three into the front and back loop. So this round calls for one single crochet, one increase six times round, giving you 18 stitches at the end of round three. Now, if you're getting the hang of that transition, well done, because it is a little bit of a tricky thing to learn, but you're going to thank me for it later. 
Um, when you're creating something like a, a bee or a pattern that has stripes and has color changes, you'll find that this makes the color change almost invisible and you won't have a jolt in color. So bear with it, you'll see results, I promise. Now on to round four. You'll be creating two single crochets, one increase, repeating that six times around, giving you 24 stitches. Now, I just wanted to say to you that it wasn't until I became a content creator that I realized just how important it is for um, the support of your community. And if you're enjoying this video, if you're getting something from it, I would love it if you would just hit that like button and consider subscribing for some more really fun, creative content. It's free and quick for you to do this and it would absolutely mean the world to me. Now on to round five, and it's five single crochets and an increase, and we repeat that only four times around, which will give us 28 stitches at the end of round five. If you've got an idea for a project you'd like to see me make, please leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. So we'll be on to round six. Round five was the last round of the blue color for me until I get to the bees behind. So I want you to just check the chart and make sure, whichever bee it is that you're making, where you're up to with round six, whether you need to have a color change now or whether you need to uh, color change next round or round seven. So just be aware of where your color change is. Now I'm gonna show you how to do a color change where it's seamless and you can't see any jolting color. What you're going to do is undo the very last single crochet stitch that you created in that previous round. We're going to half create our single crochet. So yarn over, pull it through, but not complete it. So we, we pick up the new colour, wrap it over the hook and pull that through to complete that last single crochet stitch. Now we'll transition with the new colour and continue on our pattern, which will be single crochet all the way around for round six. So going through both those loops again, doing your transition, and now we're into our new color. So whenever you have a color change in this pattern, you'll be color changing this way. You can tie the tails of the colors that we've just changed over. That keeps it nice and secured. And if you know me, I like knots, so it gives me a chance to tie some knots. And then continue. So Rounds six, seven, and eight for me are going to be single crochet around with the pink color. Now, because rounds six to 14 are actually all the same, they're just gonna be single crochet around. So that's 28 stitches around, giving you that nice stripey B body. If you know what your pattern is, you can jump straight ahead to round 15 and I will put that in the timestamp so that you can jump straight to that. And it's at that stage that I will show you how to create the bee's face. So if you know what you're doing, jump to round 15 and I will see you there. And if not, stay with me and enjoy the journey. Now on to round nine and my color change will be to white. So I'm undoing that last stitch, incorporating the white yarn halfway through that single crochet stitch, transitioning and rounds nine, 10 and 11 will be single crochet around giving you 28 stitches.
and on to rounds 12, 13 and 14 which will be single crochet around giving you 28 stitches and I will be changing over to the pink yarn for these three rounds. And when you're finished round 14, you can trim your yarn and we're going to create the B space. Now, if you have safety eyes, we're going to be putting those in now. But if you're going to add felt eyes, I would wait until we have finished the bee's body, uh, put the fibre fill in and had that all sealed and plumped ready for the eyes to go on. But let's start the face by making the antennas. Create a slip knot around about one foot or 30 centimetres from the end of the yarn and pop it onto your crochet hook. We're creating a variation of a chain stitch by wrapping the tail yarn over the hook, picking up the yarn, pulling it through those two loops now on your hook, as you would with a normal chain stitch. Do that again, the tail yarn over the hook, picking up the yarn with the hook end, pulling it through the two loops on your hook. So you want to create five of those stitches in total, trim your yarn and then pull the tail of the yarn through the very last stitch. Now if I'm doing this too fast for you, just remember that YouTube has a feature that you can select to slow down this video and watch it again. Okay, let, let's do that again for the second antenna. So we're creating a slip knot and putting it onto our hook, using the tail to go over the hook and picking up the yarn that's attached to your ball of yarn, pulling that through the two loops on the hook. Tail over and yarn through the two loops. Tail over, yarn through two loops. And one more time. Okay, trim the yarn. Pull the tail through, and you've got two antennas. Now it's time to add your bee's cute little smiley mouth. I'm using five stranded embroidery cotton, but you could just use yarn if that's what you have available to you. Cut a length and then thread that onto your needle. Insert the needle inside of your bee, bringing the needle out on one corner of the smiley mouth expression. And then taking the needle back in through the other side of the smile. Now I'm using the very first round as my guideline as to where I want my mouth to be. This way the yarn will actually sit really neatly into that little curve that's been created. Bring your needle back up through a couple of points just to fix the smile into place. So all I'm doing is going over the yarn smile, that little, that little curve of the smile, and then inserting the hook back into the very same hole and that will actually hold that into place. So I'm fixing that into three different points around the smile. And then taking my needle back through to the other side, to the reverse side of the bee's face, so I can tie some knots, uh, fasten the tail of my embroidery cotton with the beginning tail of my embroidery cotton to keep it all fastened in place. So you can just tie a couple of knots and then trim off any excess. Okay, we're going to add the safety eyes now. Now I'm using, they're about a 9 to a 10 millimetre size a safety eye, 
which I would say is around about two fifths of an inch. But just use the size that is suitable to the yarn that you've used. Because as you can see with the rainbow bee in the background, I've had to use quite a bit bigger eye for that one because it's a bigger size yarn, bigger size bee. Now, as far as the placement goes, I like it to be either in line with the mouth or up a little bit higher. Because I'm adding heart cheeks in felt, I want to make sure that the eyes aren't too low and that I'm able to add the cheeks without them being kind of crammed down at the bottom of the bee's face. And when you're happy with the position, put the backs onto the safety eyes. Okay, it's time to fix the antennas into place. Now I like to put my antennas five rounds from the very middle of the bee's face and about four stitches apart. So I've worked out roughly where I want the first antenna to go and I bring through one of the tails of yarn from one antenna. Then move across one stitch space and bring through the other tail of yarn. And you also want to make sure that your antennas are curling over because they look quite cute like that. Repeat this process with a second antenna. Now I didn't like where I put my antennas the first time around so I moved them which is pretty easy to do. When you're happy with the placement, turn your bee inside out and tie the yarn tails together two or three times just to secure them in place and then trim any excess yarn. Now we're on to round 15 so we can complete the bee's body. Just bring out my pattern again. You can see that rounds 15 to 19 are in the blue colour. So I'm changing my yarn to the blue. And here are the other bee patterns in case you need to just check to see what colour you're up to for round 15. Change to your colour yarn and then continue on for round 15, which will be single crochet all the way around, giving you 28 stitches. Round 16 will be five single crochet stitches, one decrease, and we repeat that pattern four times round, giving you 24 stitches. And don't worry if you don't know how to do the decrease, I'm gonna show you how to do an invisible decrease, which is pretty easy, and it makes two stitches into one. Now we're working with the next two stitches and we're just going to use the very front loops of both of those stitches. So by inserting our crochet hook into the very first front loop and then into the front of the second front loop, yarn over and pulling that loop through the two loops that you've picked up onto your hook and then yarn over and pulling it through the remaining two loops on your hook as you would with a single crochet stitch. Now I'm going to show you that again. Insert your hook through the front two loops of the next two stitches, yarn over, pull through those two loops, yarn over through the remaining two loops on your hook. And on to round 17. You'll be working two single crochets, one decrease, six times around, which will reduce your round to 18 stitches.
Now when you've finished round 17, it's the perfect time to add our first lot of fibre fill to our bee. Or as I like to call it, some loving stuffing. Now you want to get a fair bit of your fibre fill into the bee, but try and keep it away from where you're working with the crochet because it's very easy to get hooked in when you're um, continuing your work. The hook pulls the fibre fill through and it gets all fluffy and messy and yucky. So just really fill your bee up as much as you can, but try to keep that fibre fill away from where you're working. And one way I like to keep the fibre fill away from the edge is while I'm crocheting from uh, this time on, I'll keep a finger inside just pushing down that fibre fill away from where I'm working and that seems to work out pretty well. Okay, so on to round 18, which will be a single crochet and a decrease. And we'll do that six times round, giving us 12 stitches. And we're on to round 19, which is the last round of our B. It is six decreases all the way round. So when you transition to your back loop, you're going to use the front two loops to decrease in the first two stitches. Then continue all the way around, so that's six decreases, leaving you with six stitches. And when you've completed your last decrease, you can trim your yarn and pull the tail through that stitch. And now is the perfect time to top up with some fibre fill. If you've got a little bit of gap there, a little bit of space to add a little bit more fibre fill, do that. I'm just using the back of my crochet hook to push that down into place. And now thread your yarn tail onto your darning needle and by going into each of those six stitches I'm just going in from reverse through the top stitches I'll be able to pull the yarn tight which will draw that hole closed so pull the tail firmly and that will close up that hole. Then just weave the tail of the yarn through, backwards and forwards, through the same colour as your bee's behind. And when you've woven that through a few times, just trim that yarn off. And you've completed your bee's body. Yay! So chubby, so cute. Now we're going to add the little heart cheeks. Now I've got these little red hearts that I've cut out of felt and I just wanted to try them for size but I know it's not the right colour so yeah I'm pretty happy with the size and I grab out some blue and pink felt so you just want to take some felt that you think matches your bee's design. I've gone with the pink and I'm just going to cut out two little hearts. When you've cut out one and you're happy with the size, just put that onto another piece of felt and then use that as your template guide. Or if you have something that's already the right size, you could trace around that onto your felt using a Sharpie or another marker and then trim it out using your scissors. I'm using some fabric glue, which is an all-purpose sort of uh, craft glue. and sticking those on and I really think it brings your bee to life having those cute little cheeks. Now on to making the wings. Grab the colour yarn that you're using to make the wings. I'm using white. Create a magic ring leaving a long enough tail to be able to sew the wing onto the bee when you finish creating it and work six single crochets in the magic ring.
Now to transition join and for round two I want you to increase in every stitch so that's six increases which will give you 12 stitches at the end of round two. I hope you're enjoying this video so far. You've nearly finished your B and I'm so proud of you. If you are enjoying it, please hit that like button and don't forget if you subscribe, you won't miss out on any of my really fun projects coming up. And I don't want you to miss out. And now it's on to round three, which is our final round of our little wing. So we start with an increase, followed by 10 single crochet stitches. And then the very last stitch is an increase. But don't transition, there's one little step we need to do after that. When you've completed your last increase in that round, I want you to have a look. There's a, a strange little stitch space that seems to occur between the last stitch in that round and the first stitch in that round. And what I want you to do is to do a single crochet into that little stitch space. And then after you do that, slip stitch to the very first single crochet you created in that round, trim the yarn and pull that tail through. Now, of course, you just created one wing, but you don't want your bee to fly around in circles, so you'll need to make another wing. Now that you've completed the bee's wings, you want to position them onto the bee's body using that middle stripe as a guide. I generally leave one or two stitches in between the wings, just so you can see some of that, that bee's body stripe through it. Thread the middle yarn tail onto your needle and just weave it in and out a little bit to take it over to the edge where the other tail comes out. We're going to use those two tails to sew it onto the bee's body. If you've got a couple of pins that you could use just to mark the center of the bee's face and taking it over to the bee's back, I find this is really helpful. If you don't have pins, you might have a couple of needles or bobby pins or um, safety pins or even a piece of yarn just to mark the central position on the back. Now there's no exact or particular way you have to sew the wing onto your bee. I'm just using the tail that I've already moved over to the edge of the wing and just by going in and out of the stitches on the back, um, sewing that onto the, you know, the position that I want. I'm also using the curve of the wing uh, facing upwards. This way you can actually get the, the wings into two different positions on your bee so you can have them so that they're cupped and inward and quite cute and sitting upwards or you can flatten them out and make them look like they're flying which is pretty cute as well. When you're finished and happy with the position I usually just tie the tails together, hide them in the bee's body and then trim the excess yarn. And you're going to repeat this process for the second wing, just making sure that the curve of the wing is the same as the first wing you've attached. And ta-da! I really love this bee pattern. I hope you've enjoyed creating your own little bee. Whether it's a big one like this, or a little one. Remember they're both using the same pattern. As always, I'm really happy with this project, but I do have to ask my little dog Piglet. Piglet, what do you think?
Well, I think Piglet not only loves the bees, but she's also supporting the LGBTQ community. Thanks, Piglet. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and helpful. If you did, please leave me a like, comment and subscribe to show your support. I would really appreciate it. Also, please remember to be kind to one another. And as always, stay awesome.